Father, I thank you so much today for your people. Oh, Lord God, for the love of our lives. Hallelujah. And, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for turning things around, letting us know, Lord God, no matter what happens in our lives, that you can change things for us, that you would resurrect. That's what Jesus, that's why you came. Lord God, we, we was wretched, we was lost, but when Jesus came, we were found. And I thank you, Lord God, for this Easter Sunday, Lord God, that you had to die. Oh, but be rose up again for us. I thank you, Lord God, for even defeating the enemy because we cannot do it on our own. And Lord God, you give us the power when we do everything in your name. It's in Jesus' name even that we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to try not to be before you long. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it is Easter. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk a little bit. Go with me to Luke 23. We're going to take off at verse 52. And while you're going there, again, that's Luke 23, verse 52. And then we're going to we'll go right on over to Luke 24, amen. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the real significant power of Jesus doing this Resurrection Sunday. Now, as Brother Stevie was explaining about Easter, Easter is a Christian festival. Also, it's a, Judy, a Judianic festival as well. Each celebrate it different. And I was talking to a colleague on, on Friday. I had an appointment, and we were on a conference call together, and I, I, and I immediately asked her, I, 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 you know, I mentioned have a happy Easter, and she says, well, we don't celebrate Easter until next Sunday because she's, 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 she's a Greek. She's, she's a Greek. So she said they, they, they are, she says she's an orthodox Greek. So when she said that, I immediately perked up because I thought it was very interesting how every, and then, and then in Canada, tomorrow they begin to celebrate Easter. So Easter is celebrated different by different ethnicities and different cultures. But nevertheless, God is celebrated. And I thought about that in terms of the Christians, how we celebrate it. And Christians, and I think we've been looking at this whole Easter thing kind of incorrectly, maybe. But when I had to think about this, Easter and the Christian, it is a Christian festival and a holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day after his crucifixion at Calvary as described in the New Testament. And I thought about that, a Christian festival. A celebration and then I had to remember and I said well how is it a celebration I begin to think and I begin to pray and God brought back to my remembrance when I was a child I grew up in the country but I do remember before Easter we celebrated a week maybe in my case two weeks almost a month in advance because I was in the Easter program anybody ever Hallelujah, anybody ever, when they were a kid, had to go, you had to go whether you wanted to or not. You, you, when Easter came, you knew it was Bible study, you were going, your mama was going to make you go to church, and then you were going to have to have a speech, and then you were going to have to get up before the congregation that Sunday after service, and church was long all day, and you were going to have to get up and do your speech. But the celebration was, it was the fact that not only it was a celebration, the celebration was all oh, finding eggs that you look forward to doing the egg hunt, and then on top of that, prior to the week in advance, we're going to church, we're celebrating, we're learning our speeches. This is about a month because they come get you usually a month in advance and you may have a long speech or a short speech, but you was in church. Amen. And someone was there teaching you about Christ and you were learning your speech. But the other exciting thing about the entire celebration, when I began to think on it hardly, it was the fact that we, had, we got a chance to go to the store on Saturdays and, and shop. And you got to buy new shoes, and I got a new suit, a new little tie, and, and everything. I was sharp, man. And it was always, you, then we had a, a, a feast, we were eating. But yet it was a celebration, and I began to think about that. And 
that's really what Easter is all about, celebrating Christ in the most spiritual way that you can imagine. Yes, Lord. So when you think about when you were a child, how you celebrated, and the blessings that you received in the celebration, you begin to think, because I know I was so excited to get new shoes, new suits. Sometimes, depending on the sale, I'd get two and three shirts at a time. And then I get to look sharp in church and give my little speech. I was somebody, somebody. <laughs> and each year, we did that. So I remember that. So it's true that God really, his, his, his dying and coming again on the third day was a celebration. And we do celebrate that. And we need to remember that. That's why he did it. So it's, 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 it's really should be just as exciting and it was to me when I was a child as Christmas. It lasted about the same length of time preparing because, you know, in November we began to prepare, we get, begin to prepare for December. So Easter is like that. We need to remember that. And we also remember that it is fun to take your child to go shop and buy them clothes and remember your, how your parents did for you. And it's fun to do things with them, even finding eggs. Don't allow the world to twist the fun for the children. Mm -hmm. Remember, you're doing things for them to enlighten them because as they're receiving, because I know when we got the eggs, there was usually a scripture on the egg mm -hmm. that if you found that particular egg, you got a double prize. So there's lots of things to do to honor God mm -hmm. in this time of festivity of Easter. So I wanted to share that story with you. And then Palm Sunday is a Christian movable vesture that falls on the Sunday before Easter. So we can see, and then we're going to talk about Hosanna, how the Lord, even a week prior to his death, they were all shouting, Hosanna, save us, rescue us, Lord, be with us. So we can begin to see now that Jesus, his, his dying and raising up again was truly a victory for us. So we have to remember that. We have to understand that as well. So let's go to Luke 22. Now look at this. Luke, I'm sorry, Luke 23, verse 52. And we're going to take off there. And this is the, the same chapter as Jesus had begun his descent or toward his death. This is the chapter where uh, Mary Martha poured all on him and and uh, then he had to rebuke Judas Icarus and, and all of those things. This is the same chapter, but we're going to take off at verse 52, Luke 23. This man went to Pilate and begged for Jesus' body. And notice, this is after Jesus has died. He's been crucified on the cross. And now this man, his name was Joseph. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus and took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in the sepulchre that was hewed in stone wherein never a man had ever been laid in something of this nature in life it had never happened so this was a special a special place for jesus obviously the holy spirit had something to do with it because this is where they laid him and and that day was a preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. Notice the Sabbath day. God is doing all this in a spiritual setting. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulchre, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointment and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandments. So the commandments were yet still prevalent in this time. Again, Jesus came to what? Enhance the commandments. He added to it. He didn't take away. He added to it. Meaning he brought us what? Love. So then here he is. Now look, now jump over with me to the next chapter, Luke 24. Now upon the first day of the week, the first day, this is verse 1, Luke 24. Now upon the first day of the week, barely or very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre. 
and bringing the spices with which they had had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, but yet they bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Notice every time God tells you about something, he tells you in advance. He warns you, especially if you are a, a woman, a man of God, a child of God, God always warns you about stuff that's going to take place. This is why I'm always telling you never to start worrying about the nation and turn that boob tube off. Because if you really want to know what's going to happen, you need to seek God. God always reveals to you what's going to take place. God told the people, he told the children of Israel, he told the Jewish people, he told them that he was going to die and be rose up again for their salvation. He told them that. And yet when it happened, it, they had to be called back to their remembrance. And David, I'm always saying you need to call back to your remembrance when you get into some trouble. You need to call back to your remembrance to let you know that God is the one that's going to save you. Amen. And this is what he was saying. He said, I'm going to save you. He says, and they remembered his words and returned from the scepter and told all these things unto the eleven and all of the rest. Notice there was only eleven at this time because one had already fell away. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take the heat. How many of y'all know people done fell away? They couldn't take the heat. They went and lined up with the devil, committed suicide, or oh, did all kinds of manner of evil, and still doing foolishness. Why? Because they couldn't take the heat. They wanted God to go their way. They didn't want to go God's way. They wanted to go, they wanted God to go their way. But I'm here to tell you, God ain't going nobody's way. You either going to go with God or you're going to go by yourself to the devil. And he's going to be waiting for you. He's going to set you up. And then he's going to take you down. You need to understand this. God is about teaching you about his resurrection and why it was so significant. He was also about telling us. And I was noticing when I was talking to my colleague, on Friday when she said that she was Greek. And I noticed that Paul said, Jews first, then Greeks, then Gentiles. I said, my God, there's something to that. Why not just all of a sudden, God orchestrates everything we do, whether we know it or not. We think we run in our lives and we're not. The only time we're running our lives is when we mess it up. Come on. Amen. <laughs> it's plain as day. But God will set us right back on the righteous path. And if we choose to seek God, don't you worry, somebody. Because God's going to make it right for you. He made it right for David. And by Surely he would make it right for you. These folks kill, steal, destroy. Yes, yes. And yet God blessed them. Yes, yes, yes. And made him a great nation. And not only that, he brought Jesus through his lineage. You need to understand something that God is about raising you up. The enemy is about taking you down. You need to understand what the resurrection really is. It's a celebration of your victory. It's a celebration of your deliverance. It's a celebration of you being set free from all the foolishness that has beset you and has bewitched you it's really what the resurrection is. And we need to understand that. Go with me to John 12. John 12. We're going to take off. 
at verse 1. Notice, again, this is Jesus giving the people fair assessment of what's going to take place. I love the way God lays things out for us. When you really think about it and you really look into your heart of hearts, you'll find that God has already begun to tell you what's going to take place. Then not only does he tell you, he shows you examples of how he's going to do it. Oh, I love it, somebody. He told Moses, he says, Moses, look, 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 look across, look across. I'm going to show you everything that's going to take place. He said, even though you ain't going, I'm going to show you every detail of what's going to happen to the children of Israel. He told, he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, look in the stars, boy. You won't be able to count the number of your seed. He told him, he showed him these things. And the Lord was no different. He knew that the people's faith was weak. He knew that they could not understand his death and being raised up again. He knew in their own mind, Nicodemus was saying, hey man, how can I be, how can I be born again, Lord? They could not understand who Jesus was. So Jesus went about teaching them about Christ and his resurrection and how it was going to take place. Look what he did. He took Lazarus and he used Lazarus as an example to show them what was going to happen and how he himself was going to be raised up. Look at what the scripture says. Verse, or chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, notice, six days he came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Uh-oh. There's the first example of how he's going to do this thing. The disciples was around him and they couldn't even comprehend the mind of God. God will not, he's not going, he will only give you the line up of what he's going to tell you and show you. But what you have to do is begin to seek him. And then this stuff becomes real to you. It begins to become like a television. When you're watching and you know what the next scene is going to be, come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Because you've seen the pattern. Yes. Now you begin to understand. You know what the plot is. So by you knowing and being aware of the plot, you align yourself to receive yes. the victory. Thank you, Jesus. So we see here he is. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, notice the celebration. See, they're celebrating his death. It's amazing to me. There's, it's a celebration. We, we've gotten it all wrong. We, we, we've gotten it all wrong. We start, we, 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 the devil got you, got a lot of folks fooled, got a lot of folks resenting Easter. He's telling them all kinds of foolishness about the resurrection Sunday. He's telling them, oh, you don't even need to go to church no more. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was little, the church would fill up because that's the only time a lot of folks went to church. Yes, God. But now that's not the case. The devil has beguiled a lot of folks and they have forgotten the realness of Christ. They've forgotten that it's a celebration. It's a joy. It's a wonder. It's a blessing. Here he says, he says, notice where Lazarus was, which he had been dead, whom Jesus had risen from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sit at the table with him. This boy had been raised up from the dead. Now he's sitting at the master's table. Oh, somebody. How many of y'all been raised up from the dead? <laughs> and now you're sitting at the master's Oh, come on now. You know you was in the murky mire. Yes, yes, yes. You was all lost and then God found you and he supped with you, broke bread with you and told you everything's going to be all right. Yes, yes, yes. You was blind, somebody, but now you can see. See, you need to understand what the Lord is trying to tell you today. He's showing you the examples throughout his course. Then he said, now notice, Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them. He's sitting up. Notice every time Jesus raised somebody from the dead. We were talking about healing last week. Every time 
Jesus raised somebody from the dead, they would sit up. Oh, sit straight up. Mm, I'm somebody now. See, when you've been brought back from the dead, oh, somebody, you are so God. Oh, my God, you got victory. You've been delivered. How You can put your foot on the devil's head. Because, see, you ain't got to go back that way ever again. Because, see, you, you know that you know where your power comes from. So you begin to you begin to know him. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that, that he was there. They knew Lazarus was there. And just like Jesus, they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they came that they might see Lazarus also. Because, see, they was in doubt and unbelief that Lazarus had been raised from the dead. Uh, and then whom he had raised from the dead, but the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also back to death. My God, the devil always trying to kill you. <laughs> you have to understand, when you get your victory, the enemy's not happy. Yes, Lord. Yes. He's still trying to kill you. Yes, wow. But see, by the power of Jesus, mm -hmm. you can rebuke the devil. You can tell that devil, devil, no, I'm saved. Yes. I'm saved. Yes. I'm saved. Yes. I'm set free, and I'm walking with Jesus. And I divorce, I bind you and curse you and cast you down to the pit of hell forever in the mighty name of Jesus. See, you ain't got to go back. You ain't got to go back. See, you, 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 you're supposed to go forward now. Look at Lazarus sitting at the master's table and the devil's all mad. See, you know you got some enemies out there right now. You going forward. You going forward. You making your way, man. You getting your blessing. You getting stronger by the day. And that old devil still trying to catch you behind. Oh, but you need to be saying, get thee behind me, Satan. You need to be going forward, somebody. Yes, hallelujah. This is about resurrection. Yes, Lord. This is about resurrection. You, you need to understand. Because that reason of him, many of the Jews went away, believing on Jesus. Now, look at him, look at him. Yes. See, we know a lot of folks like that. On the next day, much people that were come to the festival, the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. A lot of stuff took place in Jerusalem. A lot of stuff took place. Took, look, 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 notice what the people did. They took branches, look at 13. They took branches of what palm trees and, and went forth to meet him and, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that come in the name of the Lord. Yes, yes, See, they're crying out. They understand now that Jesus is amongst them. Oh, Hosanna, somebody. See, in the literature call of the context, it refers to the crying expression of an appeal of a divine. Now, notice not just a help, but a divine help. A divine help from God. See, Hosanna, a divine, Hosanna, Hosanna, a divine, oh, somebody, Hosanna! I, want, I don't want just a help. I want a divine help, man. I want, oh, somebody, I don't want to be blessed, but I want to be blessed in abundance. Come on, somebody. Yes. A divine, Hosanna! See, you need to understand. That's what it means, see, when you begin to understand. It's a divine help, a save, a prayer of rescue. See, the, oh my God. So that's why the people in the old church understood. Oh, they knew how to, oh, worship the Lord. They knew how to celebrate God during this time. Oh, calling out his name. Oh, we used to take pine trees and lay them down and, and, and cook, make huts and say, Jesus, lead. oh, somebody. Hosanna, see, y'all need to understand. It's a prayer of rescue. Comes even in the Jewish or the Judaic Bible of Hebrews. See, you need to get this today. Hosanna was the shout of praise or an admiration made in recognition of the Messiahship of Christ. Oh, my God. A triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He was the man to come to save us all. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Look at 16. Look at 16. Still John 12. These things understood not his disciples. See, disciples didn't understand this stuff. I told you all the time, all a disciple is. See, you, you're disciples. 
All a disciple is is somebody that wants to learn more about Christ. Mm -hmm. Are you a disciple? Yes, yes, yes. See, that's what, and disciples didn't understand all them parables. They had to wait so they could get to the Lord. And, oh, my God. In the cool of the day, just like Adam did, God came down in the cool. They had to wait till the evening. They said, Lord, what did you mean when you said all that stuff? He said, down, boys. Let me share something with you. Let me explain. He says, better do you know this because you've got the mind and the heart of babes. How am I going to confound the prudent and the wise, the proud? He said, but I'm going to explain this to you. See, because I will not have you ignorant, brethren. That's why church is so significant. Because you know yourself, you get revelational knowledge when you come to church. And the enemy always trying to keep you from church. And you can't get your healing. You can't get your breakthrough. You can't get nothing because you're trying to stand on your own. And you know your arms ain't long enough to box with God. You can't even, you, you can't even rebuke the devil unless it's in the name of Jesus. And he tells you you need to get to the saints. We talked about it last. You need to get where the elders are praying. In some churches, you don't need to be going in because you know you ain't getting no help there. You know you ain't getting no breakthrough. You know there ain't no life in it. It's a dead church. You need to be somewhere where the spirit is so you can get a breakthrough, so you can get a confirmation about your prayer and that you can be blessed and succeed. You want to win, not lose. He says, and so they took these branches. Notice, look at 16. These things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remember they had these things. It was written. Notice, call him back to their remembrance. Mm. And that they had done these things unto him. Mm. Jesus told them these things over and over again. You know, a lot of us, we just keep hitting our head, don't we? <laughs> it don't make no sense. We just keep banging our head. And then we go, oh, God, why didn't you tell me God done told you 1,700 times? You, you're still banging your head. Yes, you're still stumbling and bubbling and mumbling and falling, shuffling and jiving. <laughs> and fooling who? Nobody but yourself. Because the devil's laughing at you all the way. Amen. You need to understand. Jesus. See, these things, God is showing us the people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and rest, raised him from the dead, bear record of it. See, that in itself should have been enough for the people to understand when Jesus was telling them, I go that I might come again. Instead of trying to figure out how you're going to do it, they should have took the example of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Lazarus walking around, man. And all the other folks, they were healed. But yet they didn't take that. And Jesus answered them saying, 23, the hour is come. Notice the hour, he says, Oh, I had to believe that once God, once God let the let, let them go, once he once he let the disciples go, and he, and he knew that they could stand on their own, and he knew they had to make the bundling and stumbling of their mistakes. He knew yet. He told Peter. He says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. He says, even though though you, when you do this and when you come out of this, son, you're going to be delivered. You're going to be strong enough now where you can then begin to preach not only to the people but to the other disciples and encourage them. See, we think our failures, come on somebody, you think our failures are supposed to tear you down. No, you need to get delivered from your failures, and you need to be like the woman he told, don't sin no more, now get stronger, and go forth and deliver some saints. Oh, come on now, let's do something for Jesus. Yes, 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 Lord. You don't need to be looking back at your failures. You only have you need to be looking back at your failures if you can say, well, how and what did it profit me? How can I better myself from that failure? Because God is ready to bless you, but you've got to let go and let God. So he says, he says, and Jesus asked them, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. God knew he was getting ready to be glorified. Once he came to the realization in the garden, he says, God, I don't want to leave these boys because they're not ready. And God probably told him, yeah, they're ready, Jesus. Now you need to get yourself ready. And then Jesus says, okay, God. Not my will, but yours be done. How many of y'all know sometimes y'all don't want to let folks go? Mm. Amen. 
Oh, I just broke a yoke. You don't want to let some folks go because you want to hold not ready. No, you need to let them hit their head because every man and woman got to seek after their own salvation. You can't save nobody. Amen. Only God can save. You can't do it. Yes. Oh, some parents need to let some children go. Amen. Some folks need to let some old spouses and ex go. Amen. Some of y'all need to get rid of some mess. Yes, Lord. And then you need to be like Jesus, not my will, Lord, yeah. but yours be done. I put this in, I lay it at the altar, Lord, and walk away. Oh, Y'all need to take examples from Hannah. If you want truly a blessing from God, give it to God and leave it alone. Amen. Walk away, give it to God. Yes. God will fix it. He fixed you, didn't he? Yes. yes. What makes you think he can't fix them? Yes. No, but we want to keep reaching out and keep leaving our phone number all open for them to get back to us and yes. giving them avenue and yet we prick but we ain't let them go yes god yes lord we need to let go and let god we need to hey i give you to the lord yes god i bless you in the name of jesus yes. but i got the step Yes. Oh, I got the dust, the dust off my feet, and I got the heat. Oh, you didn't receive my promotion. Oh, I got yes. to go. Yes, Lord. Yes. You got to, you got to let go, let God. Oh, yes, God. Jesus even had to let go and let God. He had to let the disciples. He knew they were going to stumble and bumble, yes. scatter, yes. make mistakes. But he knew. Yes. He knew he had put something in them. Parents, when you know that you put something in your children, That's right. you got to let God take over. Yes, God. Let God. You got to let God because you put it in them. Jesus, I have instilled in them. I have taught them. I have shown them examples of righteousness. I have shown them the light. Now I got to go and be with the Father so that I can be glorified. He understood his course and his mission. See, your course ain't finished. I say that all the time. He that loveth, he says, he says, he that loveth. Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. In other words, notice that's so deep. If you got a grain of corn, if you ever been in a garden, if you ever seen, you've been in the country, you've seen something. Mm -hmm. If you plant something and that thing don't die, it can't come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, unless the, let, let the thing die. And what is he saying? Die of itself. Yes. Amen. Oh, somebody. Y'all yes. should get this. It, when it dies of itself. See? When you die of yourself, oh, somebody, then you can become a new creature. Amen. He says, unless the corn, the, the corn, die, uh, it abides alone. He, if, it's, if it don't die, it's, it's going to be alone. Yes. He says, but if it die, it brings forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. That's the word, somebody. He that loveth his, he that loveth his life shall lose it. But he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now in my soul, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Notice, 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 here he is pleading to God, but, but, he says, for this cause came I unto this hour, for God glorify thy name. Then came their voice, a voice from heaven, saying, I have not only Jesus, both glorified it, but I will glorify it again. Yes. He said, because you have submitted yourself to me, I'm going to bless you doubly. E. See, you have to understand, God wants you. See, whatever you have, whatever you feel that you are so good and great at, give it to God. Yes. And watch that thing multiply. Watch that thing yes. double it. Watch it begin to bless the multitude. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He told Jesus this. He said, don't you worry, boy. I got you. I got you. 
The disciples ain't got you. <laughs> but I got you. Yes, Lord. See, Martha and Mary ain't the day ain't got you. But I got you. I brought you in here. I can take you out. Yes, yes. <laughs> See, you need to understand some things about what God said. Then the people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, they said, if they said it was a thunder, others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but because of you. In other words, I, I, I'm doing this. My whole resurrection wasn't for me. My whole fighting and destroying and defeating the devil and taking the key and giving it to you was not for me. I had a place before I got here. I was already at the right hand of God. I was God. It is God, the Word. I, I don't need you need it. Amen. Keep that, that's the misconception. Mm -hmm. He came that we would have it. Yes, Lord. But we they, we not using our power. And I, I preached on this a couple of times. You have authority, the dominion. That's like somebody has given you total dominion. You got the keys to a house. Come on. Jesus gave you a key to a house. And the devil's still trying to tell you, and you're listening to him, that you don't own the house. Mm. See, you got the keys, the keys, the deed, the whole nine yards, the land, everything. You own it. Jesus gave it to you. It's like I was telling my wife, I said, honey, unless somebody give it to you, you can't give it away. Amen. Because when you own it, when they give it to you, that means you own it. Yes. Then when you own it, you're free to do whatever you want to with it. So Jesus gives you authority. It's just like the law. The law is set up for all of us. If you have a deed and a contract, you have a legitimate out. You have a legitimate document. You have a legitimate say. You have a legitimate authority over that which you have a contract, a document, and the keys. But guess what? The law is only in force until you enforce it. If you don't ever open the door, if you don't go in the house, guess what? The enemy has a legal right to go in there and squat, go in there and take, go in there and see, change deeds, whatever, because you have taken no possession over what is rightfully yours. Yeah. Somebody already get that. Yeah. They had a big thing here in Atlanta. Folks, houses, y'all remember the big bus, the foreclosures? There was an organization, and these guys, they were young kids. They were going around just changing deeds, living in the house. Mm -hmm. And the people still had the house. They hadn't. They had moved out, though, because they were afraid what the devil was telling them. The devil was telling them, meaning the mortgage company and the bank were telling them they're going to come get the house. So the people decided to just move and leave the house. And then folks behind them that wasn't affiliated with anybody went in, changed the deed, filed it in the court record, and possessed the house. They possessed the house. And one guy got so good at it, he decided to create a website and a book and a tweet and a Facebook and then the law got involved because he was so good at it. He was telling his friends and they got a whole lot of houses. That's, that, that's how the devil works. If you don't take possession of what's yours, God has given you the key but you are so mealy now Christian that you're not taking possession of what's rightfully yours. You have to stand up for what's right somebody. You have to be willing to die for what's right and what's good in the sight of the Lord. Jesus was willing to die for the righteousness of the people of God. You have to be like that. But not only that, you really, God ain't asking you to die for nobody unless you're in the war. But you are in the war. You're in the war in the army of the Lord. But you're not willing to stand up against the devil. It's a spiritual warfare. If you only just put your whole armor on, you can defeat the enemy. A lot of you give up. You let the devil have it. Because you want to quit. Oh, you want to say it ain't worth it. But I tell you, that's a lie from the pit of hell. All you got to do is press in. I don't care. Just tell the devil that you're not quitting. Tell God that you're going to stay the course. I'm telling you, man, you need to be like this. For Lord I live, Lord I die. Whether I die trying, I'm still going to get my prize. Come on, somebody. Yes, God. If you're still yet going strong, God's going to lift. You might be one of them that still be alive and take you. Oh, somebody. Yes, God. 
But see, you've got to be trying. He said, when I come, if I find you about God's business, doing good, I'm going to take you. You'd be like Enoch. Enoch was about doing the Lord's business. So the people, look at 29. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said it was like thunder. And then look at 33. For he says, look now, 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men, all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. See? It was all about resurrection of him being glorified. He understood that this was about. The whole thing was a setup. A setup to save us. A setup to save us. 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk, he says, while you have the light. Least darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. Why he have light, believe in the light. Believe in the light. Go in the direction of the light, good people. Go in the, go in the direction of goodness, righteousness, love and kindness, mercy. Oh, grace. Believe in the light that ye may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. In other words, he went to be with God. Jesus cried out and said, He that believeth on me, believe not on me. He says, He that believeth on me, Believe not on me, but believe on him that sent me. And he that seeketh me, seeketh him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believe on me shall not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words today, believe and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save. You need to understand that today. You need to understand that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you, Lord God, for revealing them to them the celebration. And not only revealing to them that they are the Christians and the chosen ones that Jesus adopted. But Lord God, that how the disciples spoke about the Jews and then the Greeks and then the Gentiles. But yet, Lord, you thought enough to save us all those that honored your son. And Father, we honor your son today by believing on him because we know by believing on him, we believe in you. Yes. And through you, all things, somebody say all things, all things. are possible. All possible. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.